Uh, this is the continuation of our lecture in geotechnical engineering with the topic flow of water through soils. Now this time, we will consider the flow on different layers. So previously, we, we have been discussing of hydraulic conductivity with uh, one soil type. Now how about if the water is flowing on different soil types or different layers of soil. Now consider this uh, uh, example here. So uh, we are to find what is the hydraulic conductivity with a given depth. So with a depth of H. And we found out that in this depth of H, there are three different soil types or three layers of soil. So we have here Z sub 1, that is the depth of the soil layer, and or the depth of the height of the soil layer. And then we have here Z sub 2, and we have Z sub 3. Okay? Now, uh, if we are to consider the flow of water, there will be two types of flow. We have the parallel flow and the normal flow. Now, what's the difference between this parallel flow and normal flow? The parallel flow will flow parallel to the division. So, this is the division of the soil layers. So, this is the parallel flow. Now, as for the normal flow, this is the flow wherein it uh, intersect the soil layers at uh, perpendicular, uh, perpendicularly at 90 degree angle. Okay, so that's the normal flow. Okay, so we have two formulas when we are looking for the hydraulic conductivity. Now, if we are looking for hydraulic conductivity at a certain depth of different soil types, what we are doing is we are computing for the equivalent hydraulic conductivity. And in symbol, it is K sub E Q. Okay? It is uh, the equivalent hydraulic conductivity. Okay? So, uh, let's uh, have the different formulas. So this is the formula for the equivalent um, coefficient of permeability in parallel flow. So, we will have here, we are looking for the K equivalent. And then, the total, uh, that this is the total width of the soil considering all soil types. Okay, again, this H here represents the total width of the soil of different soil types. So, since we have three soil types in this uh, setup, so the total width here will become this H because it represents the three soil types. So, it's not here. So, we're not taking the value of uh, L here. Rather, we are taking the value of H based on this figure because it represents all three soils. Then, it is equal to the individual soil types. The K sub 1 of the first soil layer and then the Z sub 1 or the uh, height of the soil layer okay next is the k sub 2 of the second layer multiplied with the z sub 2 which is the height of the second layer plus we have the k for example this is a k sub 3 for this third soil layer multiplied with the z sub 3 or the height of the third layer so that's the formula for parallel flow. Now, how about for the formula of K equivalent when the flow is normal? 
So, normal flow here, it hits the soil layer or this, the soil division at a perpendicular manner. So, since we have here, we have this orientation of the flow hitting the soil layer in a perpendicular uh, manner. So, we have the formula for the normal direction as a fraction having the same uh, uh, division here so there's uh, there's the clue if you have the parallel flow the formula is somewhat uh, parallel if the uh, uh, flow is normal normal flow then the formula is uh, somewhat uh, in a uh, manner wherein the uh, the division part is uh, shown or it is in a vertical manner okay so for the formula of a normal flow we again take the value of h as the representation of the width of the total uh, of, of the uh, all the soil layer so this is the h from the figure and then we have the k equivalent that we are looking for equals the height of the first layer divided by the k sub 1 of the first layer. Next, we have the height of the second layer and the, and the uh, k sub 2 of the second layer. Then, lastly, we have the height of the third layer and the k sub 3 of the third layer. So that's the formula for the normal flow. Okay, again, for the parallel flow, you have this horizontal formula here. For the normal flow, you have the vertical uh, orientation of the formula. Okay. Now let's have this uh, flow through layers of aquifers. So let's zoom in. Okay, so the first uh, scenario here is that having this soil layer, okay, soil layers here, so it has two uh, soil types, and these two layers or two soil types have different K or hydraulic conductivity. So we need to find out what is the K equivalent of this uh, whole uh, soil, layers of soil. Okay? So notice that there is a standing water here at the left part, at the upstream portion, and then there is also the downstream portion here of depth D1 uh, and depth D2. So what happens here is, since we are considering soils, we know that soils, especially if it is an uh, unconfined aquifer, has voids wherein water can, uh, due to capillary action, this water here can fill the voids upward and fill this upper portion here. Okay? Therefore, if we are taking uh, the total uh, height of the soil, we are taking it up to the topmost portion. So it is H from the bottom, from the bottom portion, up to the topmost portion of the two soil layers. Okay, and this is due to the action of the uh, capillary, or capillary action. Okay, now, uh, if this is the setup, we have aquifers in horizontal layers. So how do we compute for d or how, how do we get the formula for k equivalent? So notice the flow from the upstream side to the downstream side. The flow will be, of course, from the upstream, downstream. And this type of flow is parallel flow. Parallel because 
the flow of water is parallel to the division of the two soil layers. Okay? So, thus, we will be using the horizontal formula. Okay? So, we have here the K-equivalent, what we are looking for, the K-equivalent, and then H, the width or total width of the two types of soil, which is this portion here. And then, that is equal to the individual soil layers. We have K sub 1 and the height of the first layer. Then we have the second layer, K sub 2, and the height of the second soil layer. To, to compute for the flow per unit width, so take note, it's per unit width, we are using small q because if we are computing for the area here, it is multiplied with 1 meter width. Okay? So, how do we compute for flow per unit width? We have the formula q kia. But this time, what we are using here is k equivalent. Okay? So, k equivalent is uh, taken from this uh, formula. And then, to find the hydraulic gradient, we have here d sub 1, so the depth of the upstream portion of the water, and that is uh, minus d sub 2, the depth of the downstream side. And l is the distance traveled by the water from one observation point up to the other observation point. So, this is L or the length of travel of water. Now, how do we compute for the area? For the area, small area A here, we have here the total uh, depth of water from the upstream side and the downstream side. Then, we divide it by 2 multiply with 1 here because we are using per unit width. So that's for the area. Okay, now how about if the situation here is that so this is the two layers of soil but the uh, division is vertical. Okay. Again, we observe here the water uh, upstream side and then downstream side. So, due to capillary action, the uh, total here that we will consider is from the bottom here up to the topmost portion. Okay. Now, the flow of water is from the upstream side up to the downstream side. So, what can we observe? The flow of water intersect the layer, uh, the, the division of the layers of soil perpendicularly. Since it is intersecting the uh, division of the soil layer perpendicularly, then we will use the vertical orientation of the formula, so the fraction. Okay. So now we determined what formula to use. The question is what to put into that formula. So again, we are considering here YL. YL, the distance traveled by the water. The reason is, it represents the width of the two soil types. So it takes into consideration the length of the first soil type and the length of the second soil type. That's why we will be considering L here as the, uh, uh, the one we will put in the formula to get the value of K equivalent. So it's not the height here. No, it's not the height here because if you take this height here, you just took the same measurement of the height of K of the uh, soil type 1 and soil type 2 without even considering the differences of the 
with of the two uh, soil types. So it is safe to say that when you're looking for what to put in this upper portion of the formula, it will be the, the L1 plus L2. Okay. So if we go back to this one here, the normal flow, YH, YH here, it's because we have here Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. Okay. So the total of that is H. Okay. So same is true here. Why we took L? It's because we have L1 plus L2 here. And the total there is L. Then after we get this uh, part, the, le the, right, the leftmost, we go to the uh, individual soil layers. We have L1 over K sub 1 of the first soil type. And then plus L2 divided by the K sub 2 of the second soil layer or soil type. Now how about the flow per unit width? Again, we are using QKIA and uh, again, K here is K equivalent. K equivalent because we have two different soil layers. Then for the hydraulic gradient, the same uh, is true with the first situation. We have here hydraulic gradient equal to the upstream depth minus the downstream depth divided by the distance traveled by the water. And for the area, we have uh, depth 1 plus depth 2 divided by 2 multiplied with 1. Okay, now uh, let's try to solve for the examples using uh, these uh, principles. So let's continue here in example number 4. Consider the stratified soil deposit shown. If there are four layers, three meter thick, so each layer is three meters. So let's put here three. So this is three meters, three meters, and then three meters. I should, I think I should erase. So if we put here uh, three, three meters, three meters, three meters, and three meters, okay? Three meter thick each. And if that is three meter thick, so each here will be a total of 12, 12 meters. And then we have K sub KH sub one or K sub H one. So there are different uh, hydraulic conductivity. So if we write it here. So let's write the K of each layer. For first layer, we have 2 by 10 raised to negative 3. We have 1 by 10 raised to negative 5. We have 2 by 10 raised to negative 4. We have 1 by 10 raised to negative 3. And the units are centimeter per second, centimeter per second, centimeter per second, and centimeter per second. Determine the equivalent coefficient of permeability in the 
horizontal direction. So, it's looking for K equivalent horizontal. So, K sub EQ H. And then, letter B, if hydraulic gradient is equal to 0.70, determine the total flow Q. So, small Q in cubic centimeter per second. Okay, so let's answer the letter A first. Again, let's have the uh, condition. So, it's looking for the horizontal direction of flow. So, from the word horizontal direction. So, what's it, what it's looking for is the horizontal flow. If that is horizontal flow, it is parallel to the division of the soil layers. And if it is parallel, we are going to use for the, the horizontal orientation of the formula. So, we have there K equivalent H then the total H equals K sub 1 H1 plus K sub 2 H2 plus K sub 3 H3 plus K sub 4 H4 okay and then we uh, substitute the values for this so using the figure we are looking for K equivalent H multiplied with the total H 12 equals K sub 1 is 2 times 10 raised to negative 3 multiplied with H 1 3 and then we have plus 1 times 10 raised to negative 5 multiplied with now uh, don't uh, worry about the, for the the units because okay if, if I put the unit so if uh, some are worried about the unit so k equivalent h multiplied with 12 meters equals k sub 1 is 2 times 10 raised to negative 3 centimeter per second multiplied with 3 meters plus 1 times 10 raised to negative 5 centimeter per second multiplied with 3 meters plus 2 times 10 raised to negative 4 centimeter per second multiplied with 3 meters plus 1 by uh, 1 times 10 raised to negative 3 centimeter per second multiplied with 3 meters. So if we uh, take the sum of this, okay, so we have their centimeter meter per second. The uh, meter here will be cancelled on all meters here. Okay, so what's left will be centimeter per second so it's still good okay so let's uh, compute for k equivalent h so two we have there two times ten raised to negative three times three plus one times ten raised to negative five times three oops times three plus 1 times 10 raised to negative 3 times 3 plus uh, 2 times 10 raised to negative 4 plus 3. Okay, so the answer here is 8.025 times 10 raised to negative 4 centimeter per second. Okay. So, we have here the value of K equivalent horizontal. Next, uh, what we're looking for here is determine the total flow Q in cubic centimeter per second. Okay. 
So for the total flow, we have here two methods. You can have uh, to solve for different Q. We have here Q sub 1, Q sub 2, Q sub 3, Q sub 4. So you can have com uh, to compute four small Q and then you get the total Q there. But the faster way is to get that K equivalent or the total K here. So the K equivalent, which is we have computed here. And that's what we're going to use in the formula Q Kia. Q, small Q, and then K equivalent H I A. And we're using here the smaller A because the area here we will use uh, times one or per meter width. Okay? So determine the total flow in Q in cubic centimeter per second. So we will use uh, centimeter A. So uh, per unit width or per one centimeter width. Okay, let's just use that as a reference here because we're looking for cubic centimeter. Okay, so Let's use one centimeter width. So we have here uh, K equivalent 8.025 times 10 raised to negative 4 multiplied with the hydraulic gradient given 0.70 and the area. The question here is what area are we going to use? The total uh, height of the soil layer. Why total? Because we're using K equivalent. So we're using K equivalent. So we're taking the total layer of soil. <clears throat> so that is 12 meters. But in centimeter, that is 1,200 centimeter multiplied with 1 centimeter width. So, Q now is equal to 8.025 times 10 raised to negative 4 times 0 0.7 times 1,200. So, the total flow here is 0 0.674 cubic centimeter per second per centimeter width. That's for number eight. Okay, so screenshot first. Now let's go to number nine. The figure shows layers of soil in a tube that is 100 mm by 100 mm in cross section. So the uh, the layers of soil that it's uh, mentioning here is soil layers A, B, and C. And the cross-sectional area is a square. So if we are looking here, so if this is uh, our eyesight. So the... Uh, The dimension here is 100 centimeter, 100 mm by 100 mm. Okay. Water is supplied to maintain a constant head difference 
of uh, 400 mm across the sample. So, the difference of this water uh, level here. The hydraulic conductivities of the soils in the direction of flow through them are as follows. So, we have soil A, soil B, soil C given the hydraulic conductivity and the porosity of each soil layers. Calculate the equivalent K in centimeter per second. Calculate the rate of water supply in cubic centimeter per hour. So how about this? Calculate the equivalent K in centimeter per second. So considering here the water, the flow of water, so it flows like this and goes out like that. So the flow of water here is uh, hitting the, or it, it intersects the soil layer perpendicularly, right? So the orientation of the formula we're going to use is the vertical orientation, okay? So that's for letter A. Now B, calculate the rate of water supply in uh, cubic centimeter per hour. So it's looking for Q. Big uh, letter Q because we're not using per unit width anymore. Next, letter C, calculate the seepage velocity through soil in soil C in meter per second. So V sub S, seepage velocity. So if we're looking for seepage velocity, we need the average velocity. Okay, now let's solve them one by one. Uh, okay, so we need to write the, okay, we need to rewrite this uh, K, values of K here. So for soil A, we have 1 by 10 raised to negative 2. Okay. Then soil, C, uh, soil B is 3 times 10 raised to negative 3. Then soil C is 4.9 times 10 raised to negative 4. Okay. And the porosity here for soil A, we have 25%. Porosity, 32%. For B, for C, we have 22%. Okay? So, okay, so we have put all the data here. So it's easier to see while solving. For letter A, again, for, for uh, K equivalent, equivalent hydraulic conductivity we're using here will be the vertical so as mentioned earlier the vertical uh, orientation so if we're using the vertical orientation by the way so the flow of water is uh, from here oops, from here up to here then goes out like that and the soil layer is this. Okay. So, of course, we know that it is all, all over K okay, equivalent. So, what do we put here? That is 150 plus 150 plus 200. So that is 500 mm. Again, in what unit? Centimeter. So we're looking for K equivalent in centimeter. And the K equivalent here is already in centimeter. So let's use here 50. So 50 centimeters. Equals. 
the uh, soil A and that is 15 centimeter then 1 times 10 raised to negative 2 plus we have here 15 for soil B 3 times 10 raised to negative 3 plus we have 20 centimeters for soil C 4.9 times 10 raised to negative 4 so k okay, equivalent now is equal to oh yeah a while ago if, even if you put here 150 yeah, the result will still be uh, in centimeter per second okay so here we have k equivalent point zero zero one or fifty seven centimeter per second now next we have letter b we are computing for the rate of flow in cubic centimeter per hour and then that is in cupia big letter a now the difference here is we are using k equivalent here right so we have k equivalent of 0 0.001057 centimeter per second. Then we have here the uh, member hydraulic gradient is the difference in the the head. So we have there 400 divided by the length of travel of the water through the soil. So that is 400 divided by 500. Then we have the area. So the area there is 100. Mm, okay, so let's use 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. So that is equal to 0 0.08456. Cubic centimeter per second. Now, what we're looking for here is in cubic centimeter per hour. So, multiplied with uh, 60 second in one minute, and then we have here uh, 60 minute in one hour. So, that is equal to 0 0.08456 times. 3600 so 304 so q is equal to 304.4 cubic centimeter per hour next let, let us calculate the seepage velocity through soil c so seepage velocity v sub s is equal to v over n so, V sub S C, seepage velocity of soil C. Now, let's calculate first the average velocity V. Okay? For V here, so we have, so remember QAV, QAV, so V is equal to Q over A, that is equal to Q is 3, no, let's use the in centimeter one point zero eight four five six centimeter cubic centimeter per second and that is ten centimeter by ten centimeter. So average velocity here is eight point four five six times ten raised to negative four centimeter per second okay so yeah so what we're looking for is in meter per second so if it's in meter per second we multiply uh, we divide this so we divide this in so one meter divided by 100 centimeter so cancel centimeter so V now is equal to 8.456 times 10 raised to negative 
6 meter per second. Now, V sub S sub C is now equal to 8.456 times 10 raised to negative 6 divided by what's the porosity for soil C? It's 22%. So, we have here 0.22. So, V so, seepage velocity through soil C is now equal to 3.84 times 10 raised to negative 5 meter per second. Okay. So, that's for number 9. Screenshot first. Let's go to number 10. So, given the stratified soil shown below, so this is the stratified soil that is uh, shown, the properties of each soil are as follows. So, we cannot write it one by one because it's a very limited space or, yeah, maybe we can, oh, not here so small alright so here are the coefficient of permeability k sub 1 k sub 4 k sub 2 k sub 5 k sub 3 and k sub 6 so we have here the different uh, hydraulic conductivities of the six types of soil Given the thickness, so the thickness here is 1.2. So the thickness here is 1.2. Let's write that here, 1.2. So 1.2 meter. And then we have H3. Oh, we cannot write all of them. So H3, H4, H5 uh, height. Then we have the length. So we have the length here, L1, L sub 1, L sub 2, L sub 3, then L sub Six. And that is zero point eight meter, zero point seven meter, one point five meter, and then zero point nine meter. Right? Then the head difference is one point eight meter. So that is 1.8 meter. Determine the total flow per, per meter. So per meter, per meter width. So we're going to solve for small q. Determine the equivalent coefficient of permeability. Okay, so this, is, this one is a very tricky part. Because uh, if you look at the figure, the flow of water here will flow right here and goes out there. So, you can notice that the flow of water intersects at this portion, but it's parallel on the division at this portion. So, we have a series parallel flow so you remember your circuits how do you solve for a series parallel flow so you make it into series you make it less complicated so that's what we are going to do here so what we're going to do is uh, to make it less complicated we take out somewhere here that complicates the entire system. So we will take this one out. Okay? 
take, take this out and then solve it separately. And what will happen here is we will take the k equivalent of this portion and let's name that k equivalent prime. Okay? So let's name that as k equivalent prime. Then later on, if this becomes k equivalent prime, so it becomes uh, one type of soil at this portion here, then it will be easier for us to solve for the second k equivalent, which is the orientation of vertical uh, formula. Okay? So let's concentrate first on the uh, first question. Uh, K equivalent for the uh, first k equivalent here so what are we solving i we are solving first the k equivalent before we can get the value of q okay so we have here Okay, so uh, let's have first the portion here uh, solving for k equivalent prime. So if the flow is uh, like this, the flow is like uh, if that's the flow and then this is the soil div division. Therefore, what we're going to use here is the uh, horizontal orientation of the formula. So we have here K equivalent prime. Then the total height of the soil. We have there H3, H4, and H5. The total height there is 1.2 meter. Equals the individual uh, layers so we have k sub 3 so what's the k sub 3 here okay so uh for better viewing use your uh, own copy of our lecture material of our study guide and look at the given so for k sub 3 so, K sub 3 is 4.5 centimeter per hour multiplied with H sub 3. H sub 3 is 0 0.3 meter plus uh, K sub 4 and 6.25 centimeter per hour and then we have H sub 4, that is 0 0.50 meter, and then we have K sub 5 of 8.15 centimeter per hour multiplied with H sub 5 of 0 0.40 meter. So we now have K equivalent prime uh, here. So let's solve for k equivalent prime. So 4.5 times 0 0.3 plus 6.25 times 0 0.5. Oops. Plus 8.15 times 0 0.4 divided by 1.5. So we have there 6.446 centimeter per hour. Now using that value for K equivalent, let's now solve the next orientation. So that is the flow of water intersecting the, the uh, soil layer perpendicularly. Therefore, the orientation for the next formula will be vertical so this is the next formula k equivalent oh, should be the total 
So by the way, what's the total uh, width of the soil or the length of the soil? It's the this one here. So what's the total? What is 0.8 plus 0.7 plus uh, 1.5 plus 0.9? That is 3.9 meter. So we have here 3.9 meter. 3.9 meters. And we are looking for the K equivalent. Equals uh, K sub 1 here. So we will use L sub 1 of 0 0.8. So from the figure. And then the K sub 1 value is 6.25. Plus 0 0.7, and then the value for k sub 2 is 5.75. Plus, oh, okay. okay. So, plus the k equivalent is 6.446 over 1.5. Plus zero, no, it's uh, it should be one point five over six point four four six plus zero point nine over k sub six of three point six. Okay. All right, so let's uh, move this down here. Same is true with this one. The reason is I forgot that we need to put here total H equals uh, a while ago this is K sub 3. So this is K sub 3, H3 plus K sub 4, H4 plus K sub 5, H5. So that uh, it will be easier to determine where I got those uh, values. And then here we have uh, so the total L over K equivalent equals L sub 1 over K sub 1 plus L sub 2, K sub 2 plus K, uh, this is uh, L sub 3 then K equivalent prime plus L sub 4 and then K sub oh no, it's L sub 6 so L sub 6 over K sub 6 okay, so in this manner it will be easier to determine where I got those okay? so let's solve now so what is point uh, eight? So point eight or six point twenty five and seven five point seventy five plus one point five six point four four six plus point nine three point So I think I got the wrong value. Okay, so point seventy three. So three point nine divided by the answer. So the answer here is five point thirty two. K equivalent is equal to 5.32 and the unit here is centimeter per hour and the question here is 
what unit are we looking for? Determine the unit flow per meter. Determine the equivalent coefficient of permeability. So it did not mention, so let's just use this. Okay? So that is 5.32 centimeter per hour. Next, uh, yeah, we need to solve for Q. Determine the total flow per meter. So for small Q, we are using Q equivalent, Q Kia. But uh, we are using uh, K equivalent. Now, K equivalent is 5.32 centimeter per hour. But we are going to use here meter. So let's convert first. So this is uh, 1 meter over 100 centimeter. Then for I, uh, for the value for the equip uh, hydraulic gradient, that is uh, the difference of uh, head and that is over the length of travel of the water. So 1.8 divided by 3.9. Then the area, cross-sectional area, that is 1.2 times 1. So this is uh, 1.2 meter times 1 meter. The total flow is 0 0.029 time uh, meter cubic meter per hour. Okay, so this is Q. So that's for number 10. So screenshot first. Alright, so let's go to the next one. We have number 10. So for number 11, a canal is cut into a soil with a stratigraphy shown. Assume flow takes place laterally and vertically through the sides of the canal and vertically below the canal. The values of K is equal to K sub X equal to K sub Z in each layer are given. What is the equivalent permeability in the horizontal direction through the sides of the canal in centimeter per day? What is the equivalent permeability? So, uh, horizontal. Okay. Horizontal, the sides of the canal. So, B, what is the equivalent permeability in the vertical direction through the sides of the canal then C determine the equivalent permeability in the vertical direction below the bottom of the canal so all uh, equivalent permeability has the unit centimeter per day okay so let's solve here so given all the dimension needed and the values for K in each layer. So what we're looking for for letter A is so what is the equivalent permeability in the horizontal direction through the sides of the canal. Horizontal. Horizontally. So uh, let's use the blue color. So this is what we're looking for. So, the portion here. So, let's... Uh, J. 
actually if uh, you're using coloring so this portion here all right therefore we are considering three soil layers okay so if that is three soil layers what is the height here so that is uh, one plus one point five plus oh no that's uh, three that should, that should be three meters minus 1 minus 1.5 that is 0.5 so here the height here is 0.5 so let's put here 0.5 so it's so small hmm, where should I put that ah here so 0 0.5 meter okay so, if the flow of water is horizontal and it's into this uh, soil layer, so you can observe that it is a parallel, the flow is parallel to the uh, division of the soil layer. So, we're going to use the, the uh, horizontal orientation of the formula. So, K equivalent times H. So, so let's uh, use directly now. 3. 3 meters equals uh, 2.3 times 10 raised to negative 5 times 1 meters, uh, 1 meter, and then 5.2 times 10 raised to negative 6 times 1.5 meter plus we have there 2 times 10 raised to negative 6 times 0 0.5. So, K okay, equivalent is now equal to 2. So, we're looking for centimeter per day. Okay, so that is equal to 10.6 uh, times 10 raised to negative 6, that is centimeter per second, and multiplied with, uh, so that is uh, per day, 24 hour. So, how many seconds in a day? So, 60, 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 in a day so 86 400 so 86 400 seconds in a day so 10.6 times 10 raised to negative 6 times 86 400 seconds so 0. 916 centimeter per day. Okay. So that's the first answer. Next, letter B. So for letter B, what's we're look, what we're looking for? What is the equivalent permeability in the vertical direction through the sides of the canal? In centimeter per day vertical direction through the sides of the canal let's use red okay so this is the side of the canal so it's vertical so this portion here how many layers we have three layers of soil same same equivalent but the uh, difference here is the flow is vertical 
and it is intersecting the uh, division of the soil layers in a perpendicular manner. So we will use the the uh, vertical orientation of the formula. So we have here three over k equivalent. Okay. And that is equal to 1 over uh, 2.3 times 10 raised to negative 5 plus 1.5 over 5.2 times 10 raised to negative 6 plus 0 0.5 all over 2 times 10 raised to negative Six. So we have here the k equivalent now equal to so that is five point sixteen times ten raised to negative six centimeter per second multiplied with 86 400 seconds in a day I believe it's a song and then we have there 0 0.44 446 centimeter per day okay that's for letter B let's go to letter C determine the equivalent permeability in the vertical direction below the bottom of the canal. So, here. So, let's use orange. Green. Okay, so, here. So, this portion here. So, how many soil layers? We have, again, three soil layers. But this time, they are different one. Okay. So, what's the height here so that is 2 minus 0 0.5 that is 1.5 meter okay and the total so the total length or the total height here so the total there The total is 1.5 plus 1.2 plus 3 is equal to 5.7. 5.7 meter. Okay, so since the flow is again uh, downward like that, it is intersecting the soil layer in a perpendicular manner. Therefore, we're using the uh, vertical orientation of the formula. So that is 5.7 over k equivalent is equal to the first soil layer is 1.5 over 2 by 10 raised to 6, negative 6. So 1.5 all over 2 times 10 raised to negative 6 plus next is 1.2 over 0.3 times 10 raised to negative 4 and then we have the last one is uh, 3 over 0.8 times 10 raised to negative 3. So solve for k equivalent. And that is equal to 7.18 times 10 raised to negative 6 centimeter per second multiplied with 86 400 seconds per day. And the answer here becomes 0 0.62 centimeter per day. 
So that's for number 11. Okay, next, let's go to number 12. And I think this is the last one. Okay, yes. So, the last one, number 12. So, this one is going to be lengthy. A test setup is shown. A cylindrical mold, 4 inches in diameter, is filled with silt to height H1. Okay, so, here. So... A cylindrical mold, 4 inches in diameter. So the diameter here is 4 inches. Oops. So here is the diameter of the entire mold. It's 4 inches. Filled with silt to a height of H1.2 feet. So this is the H1. So this is silt here to this portion there. Whose coefficient of permeability is given as 3.6 times 10 raised to negative 4. Let's write that. So that's, it's easier to solve here. So the seal is 3.6. This is a darker one. 3.6 times 10 raised to negative 4. That's the key. And each one is 0 0.2 feet. A second coaxial mold is placed on top of the first mold whose inside diameter is D is equal to 1.5 inches. Inch. So this is the second mold. So this is what it's talking about, the second mold here, the smaller one. Now we observe that it's talking about fit in a in feet, so let's convert the diameters into feet also. Smaller diameter here, and the bigger diameter. Four inches. What is four divided by 12? Or is one third? So what is one third foot? And uh, the other one is 1.5 inch. So 1.5 divided by 12. 0.125. So 0 0.125 feet. Okay, next, height H2 is 0.3. So height H2 is 0 0.3 0 0.3 foot okay. and then the inside of the second mold is filled with silt so this one now is contained silt but the annual ring annular ring outside the small tube and the outer tube is filled with sand so this outside is sand whose coefficient of permeability is 2.7 by uh, times 10 so 2.7 times 10 raised to negative 3 that is in feet per minute so feet per The test setup is a permeameter of a constant of constant head. Water is placed in the mold and maintained at a level H is equal to 1.25 feet 
1.25 foot above the level of the outlet. So it's this one here, the 1.25 foot. And then we have, okay, so it may be considered that the system consists of a fictitious soil of thickness H is equal to H1 plus H2. So H1 plus H2, okay, so that is 0 0.5. So here, this is 0 0.5 foot. What is the total flow of water in cubic foot per minute? So, Q. What is the equivalent coefficient of permeability, K sub F, in feet, a foot per minute? So, the entire system is looking for its K sub F, or equivalent coefficient of permeability. Then, C, what is the total amount of water? that percolated after 55 minutes is looking for the volume okay so this uh, setup if you look at 3d it looks like this cylinder and we have uh, two types of soil the sand and the silt the silt part we have the smaller cylinder here and the big cylinder and we have the sand as the the one outside which we have as a hollow cylinder okay so that's the setup we're looking for the k equivalent of that one now how do we solve this kind of problem how do we solve this it's looking for the q it's looking for the k equivalent Okay. So we can solve this as uh, separately. We are to consider flow one here. So if the water flows here, the water flows uh, outside. So there's two types of uh, soil. So the first flow goes in here, the second flow goes outside, let's name that as Q sub A, and then this one here is Q sub A, and then let's name outside, the flow outside as Q sub B. Okay. So how do we solve this? Again, we need to make it uh, a simpler one. So we're looking at the outside ring because the inside, the inside uh, cylinder here, it has uh, only one soil type. It has only one soil type here in the middle. So what we are going to do here is we will treat so we will cut here, okay, so treat this already as a hole, the hole uh, sealed in the middle and the outside, the uh, outside ring has two different soil types and that's what we are going to look for, K equivalent and if the flow of water is downward like this and the intersection of uh, uh, it, it uh, hits the intersection perpendicularly then we will use the the vertical orientation of the formula so let's use that analysis there so we are going to solve for k equivalent uh, prime okay so yeah let's use the k equivalent prime the question here is what will we put here are we going to put here the diameter 
one point uh, one over three foot or are we going to put here the point five foot so the answer there is the one point uh, the point five foot why why the point five foot because uh, it represents the the thickness of the two soil types okay so we are going to use here 0 0.5 equals 0 0.3 over and what's this 0 0.3 here the 0 0.3 here is the sand the sand which is 2.7 times 10 raised to negative 3 plus 0.2 what's the 0.2 there the seal which is 3.6 times 10 raised to negative 4 so k equivalent prime now is equal to 7.5 times 10 raised to negative 4 foot per minute okay so finally we have the k equivalent prime of this of the un, uh, outside ring okay so we have now the k equivalent of the outside ring to what are we going to use that k equivalent now so that k equivalent can be used to solve for the flow outside which is the q sub where where uh how about the uh, q sub a the k for q sub a will be the k for silk which is 3.6 okay so for q sub a using q kia we have there 3.6 as the k of the silk times 10 raised to negative 4 times the hydraulic gradient of uh, uh, 1.25 foot and the distance traveled by the water as 0.5 foot okay so 1.25 is the difference of the water level Whereas the uh, whereas the uh, length of travel of the soil uh, of the water through the soil is 0.5, so that's the hydraulic gradient. Okay, so that is 1.25 over 0.5. Then the area, the area here is uh, the cross-sectional area. Here is circular. So, the area we're going to use is the area of the circle, so pi over 4, and the diameter of the inside is 0.125 squared. So, Q sub A now is equal to 1.104 times 10 raised to negative 5 cubic foot per minute now let's go to q sub b this time what we're going to use is q ik equivalent i a the k equivalent that we computed a while ago is 7.5 times 10 raised to negative 4 the i or the hydraulic gradient is 1.25 over 0.5 then check this one out the area that we're going to use is area of ring okay so hollow in the middle so we have there pi over 4 times the outside diameter squared okay so So one point uh, one. So let's okay. 
So this one minus 0 0.125 squared. That's the inner uh, diameter. Then we input that in the calculator. And the value we get for Q sub B is 1.406 times 10 raised to negative 4 cubic foot per minute. That's for Q sub B. Next, we can now solve for the first question, what is the total flow of water in cubic uh, foot per minute? So, that's it. Q total equals Q sub A plus Q sub B. So, Q total is now equal to 1.516 times 10 raised to negative 4 cubic foot per minute. Next question here is B. What is the equivalent coefficient of permeability K sub F in feet per foot, foot per minute? So the total permeability. Should we add K equivalent with the K of uh, sand, uh, of silk? No. We can take that K sub F using the total flow. Wherein we have Q total equals K sub F I A. K, Q total is 1.516 times 10 raised to negative 4 equals K sub F and 1.25 over 0.5. Then the total area of the cross section of the soil, 1.3 squared. So K sub F is now equal to 6.95 times 10 raised to negative 4 foot per minute. Okay, next letter C, last one. What is the total amount of water percolated after 55 minutes? It's looking for volume. So having the value of QT here, we know that QT, Q sub Q total, is volume over time. So volume is now equal to, uh, we have the 1.516 times 10 raised to negative 4. The unit here is cubic foot per minute multiplied with 55 minutes. So volume now is equal to 8.338 times 10 raised to negative 3 cubic foot. So that's the final answer. That's for number 12. So screenshot. Okay, so this is the part 2 of our lecture video for uh, the topic flow of water through soil. So we still have more problems to solve. Stay tuned for part 3.